Uh, it tension equalizer. Okay, and can you explain what it does in flight and try to be less technical so everybody will understand? Yeah. Uh, so basically, because we have what's called a shifting A-frame, where the down tubes go to the hang block, when the wing is banked, um, the uh, geometry of the overall frame actually changes. So basically, it's probably easier uh, shown. When we bank the wing, normally, if you look at some of the other wings out on the market that have a shifting A-frame, um, like Airborne, uh, Air Creation, uh, p and uh, the one wire will get uh, slapped. And uh, actually, I take that back, p and uses a tension equalizer. Uh, Air Creation just started using a tension equalizer. But on some of the older wings, uh, the cable would get very loose and one would get very tight as you bank the wing. And so basically, uh, instead of making the keel kind of shift and bend and things kind of binding, the tension equalizer takes the slack and gives it to the tight cable so everything just works smoothly and effortlessly and there's no bending or binding as you bank the wing from left to right. This area here on the tips, on both tips, it's full surface and it's not sewn together. Okay. And if it was sewn, it wouldn't fly as well. So why do you just have just bungees holding the, the tips? Yeah, so the uh, bungee cord is basically a way to spring load the under surface. And uh, so generally what you have with a single surface wing, if this is the under surface and this is the upper surface, is a single surface wing can billow very easily. And there's really basically not a lot to stop the trailing edge from coming up and down as the, uh, the frame warps and wing loading changes the sail. When you get into a double surface wing, you get a triangulation effect where this fabric is holding this fabric down by making a cross brace. So what we've done is we wanted the benefits aerodynamically of the double surface, but we didn't want the cross bracing. So making the under surface spring loaded allows this to happen, which works more like a single surface and billow and gives you the benefits of the full airfoil of a double surface wing. And another reason that we went all the way to the back is when you have more double surface out on the wing tips compared to in the center of the wing, that will generally increase the speed range of the wing. It'll um, give you a higher top speed without uh, getting so much um, uh, static and dynamic uh, pitch stability. So because it's like it, like this, the wing will do 100 miles an hour easier than if it was d differently designed. Yeah, if the undersurface only came to here, um, the wing would not be as fast as it is without making further modifications somewhere else to, to offset that. So this is responsible for its speed. Most importantly, this not being sewn in hard is responsible for it being able to make large, clean billow shifts, which gives the Rival S a very uh, uh, light, responsive uh, flight characteristic. And then when we get near the, the root of the wing, now you can see it's sewn all the way across the set, not the, the center of yeah. the wing. Yeah, so what we wanted there was we didn't want the wing to billow in the center. We wanted the center of the wing to uh, stay in what we call a low twist for maximum lift and efficiency. And we don't need the center of the wing to billow shift in order for the wing to roll. We need the outboard section to billow shift and we don't rely on the outboard section for lift. We rely on the inboard section. So we basically kept the wing very efficient where it needs to make the lift and we put really large billows, perhaps larger than any other double surface wing on the market, out towards the wing tips. And when those billows go, they act like really large barn door ailerons and you get a lot of roll rate with this machine. Okay, and then probably the last question I'm interested in is with the strutted wing, you know, the strut comes from the control bar here and it goes out. Explain why it's, re why it's really important to attach the strutted wing at the exact spot and angle on sure. the leading edge tube? Well, one of the things that we do differently, um, most uh, wings do have the uh, wing strut or even the cables attached to the cross tube. A lot of uh, wing manufacturers attach to the leading edge. 
The difference is this allows us to shorten up the length of the wing strut. And the shorter you can make the wing strut on a strutted wing, the better. Not just for lower drag, not just to make the wing strut uh, stronger in compression loads and negative Gs and that kind of thing, but the aerodynamics that happen when you go to an airfoil tube. If this was a round strut, even though it would be ugly and really draggy, uh, you wouldn't have to really worry too much about uh, uh, some of the issues you get with the clean aerodynamic wing struts. But basically when you use aerodynamic wing struts, when the wing is flying straight, everything's symmetrical. When the wing starts to slip sideways, the angle of the wing strut, and then multiplied by its length, can cause problems. So keeping them short eliminates the problems uh, aerodynamically when the wing's not flying coordinated or straight. And then also having them properly angled um, also helps a lot. So there's a lot of design that's gone into just the angle of the wing struts. And you cannot switch this uh, wing strut to that wing strut. Each fitting has an opposite angle put in it to give you the same angle when they're installed properly. And also the aluminum tubing, the leading edge tube and the cross tube, they're not just one layer of tubing. And explain that and how that's made and how sure. many layers are on what. Yeah, so um, basically just like a bow and arrow, if you look at the bow, it's not the same thickness all the way down the bow. Uh, I'm not talking about a compound bow, but like an old school bow. Um, the thicker part is going to be at the center of the bow and it's going to get thinner and thinner and thinner kind of as it goes out. So we're up to um, four, depending on the wing, four or five sleeves right at the cross tube connection. And then that tapers down three, two, and then one sleeve here. And it actually goes down two sleeves towards the center of the wing. And that is to control the bow in the leading edge. And the leading edge, uh, it's not a rigid structure and the stiffness and how the leading edge is built controls a lot of how the wing is going to fly, how it's going to turn, pitch stability, pitch stability under g-force, how much load it can carry. So there's quite a bit of design just in the leading edge structure, but it is a series of sleeves where it's doubled and tripled and quadruple walled. And the crossbar is five sleeves? No, the crossbar is three sleeves. Okay, could you unzipper that? We sure. could let the camera take a look at that edge where you can see the... So I think yeah. if the camera goes right above... Yeah, back in the day when we were uh, building uh, the 950 gross uh, wings, normally the uh, cross tubes were just a double sleeve. And then uh, as we wanted to get into the 1160 gross weight category, uh, now uh, some of the wings are even 1200 uh, gross. Um, the triple sleeve cross tube, that is your weakest link on the wing. When you start adding thousands and thousands of pounds of weight to the wing, it's pretty much always going to be the cross tube that buckles and snaps first. Now that it's tripled, now that'll maybe move somewhere else. But uh, it's a very, very beefy cross tube because that's where you need the uh, strength on any wing. And then one of the new revisions, which I got in my Rival S, is the the roll dampener, which is goes between the one of the down tubes and the hang block? Yeah, so basically if you think about the biggest problem we have with trikes is the carriage swinging around a bit in turbulence. Uh, the roll damper is actually going to help slow some of the action down of the carriage. But the other thing that's pretty neat is that it gives you uh, something called pendulum effect that everybody seems to think that trikes have like a, uh, a powered parachute has pendulum effect. You have the weight of the carriage down low and the parachute up high, and that weight will actually tend to pull things and make the powered parachute fly straight. Trikes don't work that way. Even though you have the wing up top and you have the heavy carriage down below, it's on the keel, there's no pendulum effect. You can have all this weight down here does absolutely no good unless the pilot locks the weight to the wing and then you can have pendulum effect. What the roll damper actually does is it gives you some of the weight when the wing is upset it immediately does apply a resistance to that which is a self-correcting mechanism in itself. It's very light, it's, it's, uh, you can feel it when it's turned all the way up and you can definitely feel it when it's off but it's not anything that you'd have to overpower. So it's a very light damping uh, for the wing roll, but uh, it, it does make quite a difference. Given a strong thermal just on one wing, would that dampen it? Well, it'll do something. Uh, will it stop the wing from getting lifted up? Absolutely not. 
will it steady the bar movement quite a bit uh, when you're flying in heavy turbulence? Yes. I say it's the equivalent of if I was in the back seat and I put all of the weight of my hands just limp onto the control bars, which a lot of instructors will have to do for their students when they're flying through heavy turbulence, that's what the roll damper is doing up there. It's just simply putting a, the weight of some heavy arms onto the trainer bars to slow things down a bit when it's cranked all the way up to max. So yeah, the EPROP is a super low inertia propeller. Uh, which basically means that it's just lightweight. Uh, it weighs a fraction of uh, what our uh, two-bladed propeller weighs. Now, it doesn't have the, uh, the really awesome bulletproof construction uh, with the metal leading edges and the CNC aluminum hub and the, just the uh, thickness of the blades themselves. But what it does do is it's a low inertia, so you get a bunch of benefits from that. The obvious probably with a gearbox on a 912 is that start up and shut down are really, really easy on the gears and you don't have the cook clunk, clunk, clunk as you start up and especially as you shut down, just shuts down very cleanly and you don't have any kickback so it's really kind to the uh, engine. But the other thing is it's a lower inertia so you don't have the gyroscope effect when you're flying and so when you enter the turns the nose will actually yaw quicker into the turns. It feels like you're flying a smaller motor. Uh, people that have gone from a 582 trike to a 912 trike have felt this gyroscope effect uh, just from the crankshaft spinning. So one of the biggest gyroscopes on the trike is the propeller and when you remove that gyroscope from the back uh, going from a, a heavier propeller to a lighter propeller you can actually feel it in the way it flies and how nimble the aircraft is, how quick it is uh, especially with relation to how quickly the nose yaws into the turns, um, removing uh, adverse yaw and that kind of thing. This is a carbon fiber hub yes. that the blades are into, and previously the hub was aluminum? Uh, yeah, it would have been uh, almost solid uh, aluminum. So the, the entire weight of this propeller is uh, less than half of what the uh, two blade is. And of course you can really feel that uh, in every phase of starting to taxiing, um, to flying the plane. The other thing that's kind of neat also is that this propeller doesn't seem to make very much thrust at the lower RPMs and so what that does for you is it keeps you from having to ride the brakes while you're taxiing it and then as you come up in RPMs the thrust does kick in and the efficiency is actually uh, we've improved efficiency by about a gallon per hour at 80 miles per hour so there's a huge efficiency uh, uh, improvement as well but really, you know, it all amounts down to if you build the blades light, then you can equally build the hub just as light. So you wouldn't probably want to put real big heavy blades onto a super light duty propeller. So you kind of have to build out and keep making sure that everything's consistent. Um, so there's just not a lot of mass here. So um, it probably isn't as strong, but it doesn't need to be as strong. Right.